we're talking about the Leibnizian form of the cosmological argument. Anything that exists has an explanation of its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or in an external cause. If the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation is God. The universe exists, therefore the universe has an explanation of its existence. Therefore, the explanation of the existence of the universe is God. This week we're taking a look at premise two. If the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation is God. Now at first this may look like a pretty bold claim, but it's actually not quite as daring as you might think. Over the past few weeks, I've touched on premise one of the argument and gone over some of the responses to it. Now, those responses all claimed that the universe didn't require an explanation for its existence, either because it was a necessary entity in its own right or because asking for an explanation was just absurd. Now, we already discussed why all these objections fail, but at their heart, they're all committed to the same proposition. Namely, if atheism is true, then there is no explanation for the existence of the universe. This is a classic if-then statement. We could symbolize it as if A, then B. Now, in order to illustrate a point I want to make, let's take the same if A, then B form, but use something that's a bit easier to wrap our heads around. Let's say I see a ring in the store that I want to buy but it costs $100. We could make the statement, if I'm going to buy that ring, then I will need to have $100. Well, what if I don't have $100? Well, then I won't be buying that ring, will I? And this could be expressed as, if I do not have $100, then I will not be buying that ring. These two statements are logically equivalent through a rule called modus tollens, or denying the consequent. See, the if part of an if-then statement is called the antecedent. The part that comes after the then is called the consequent. Now, if we take our original statement, if I'm going to buy that ring, then I will need $100, and we deny the consequent by saying, I don't have $100, then logically this allows us to also deny the antecedent and say, then I won't be buying that ring. That's what modus tollens allows us to do. Now let's take the same rule and apply it to that statement that we said was implied by the atheistic objections to premise one. If atheism is true, then there is no explanation for the existence of the universe. Now first, deny the consequent. If there is an explanation for the existence of the universe, and this allows us to deny the antecedent, then atheism is not true. In other words, God exists. This, for all intents and purposes, is premise two. So like I said at the beginning, premise two really isn't that bold of a statement. It's simply the logical outworking of what atheists have already committed themselves to in responding to premise one. Next week, I'll give you another reason to accept that premise two is true. Until then, God bless.